In today's video, we are going to cover section 1.3, collinearity, betweenness, and assumptions. After studying this section, you will be able to recognize collinear and non-collinear points, recognize when a point can be said to be between two others, recognize that each side of a triangle is shorter than the sum of the two other sides, and correctly interpret geometric diagrams. So collinearity. Points that lie in the same line are called collinear. Points that do not lie in the same line are called non-collinear. So I have two figures below. I have points A, B, and C. These are collinear because they are on the same line. Points E, D, and F are non-collinear because they are not on a line. Now looking at this diagram to the right, I can identify collinear and non-collinear points. Remember, collinear points are points that are on the same line, and non-collinear points are points that are not on the same line. So some collinear points would be points M, O, and R because they are on the same line. Also, I could use M, P, and T. Now, these are just a few collinear points. There are many others in this diagram. Now, some non-collinear points would be points such as M, X, and T, because they are not on the same line. Or I could say M, X, and Y, because again, these are not on the same line. Now we have betweenness of points. So in order for us to say that a point is between two other points, all three points must be collinear. Now remember as well, between does not mean midpoint. Between just means in the middle of the two points. So notice in my diagram to the left, I have points A, T, and R. We say that T is between A and R. In my diagram to the right, I have points X, O, and Y, and we do not say O is between X and Y because these are not collinear. The triangle inequality. So for any three points, there are only two possibilities. The first being they are collinear. So one point is between the other two. Two of the distances have to add up to the third. So notice in my figure to the right, I have points A, B, and C. I have segment AB and segment BC. When I add up segment AB and BC, it adds up to my whole segment AC. Since this adds up together, this would mean my three points are collinear. Now option two is that they're non-collinear and the three points would determine a triangle. Notice that in the triangle to the right, I have lengths of 14, 11, and 24. When I add 14 and 11, that's bigger than 24. This is an example of an important characteristic of triangles. The sum of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle is always greater than the length of the third. So if I have side lengths of A and B, when I add those together, it has to be bigger than my third side length C. If it is not bigger than that third side length C, then I do not have a triangle. In this class, we will be given many diagrams that we will use for problems. Now there are things that we should assume from diagrams and things that we should not assume from diagrams. In a diagram, you can assume straight lines and angles, collinearity of points, betweenness of points, and relative positions of points. We should not assume right angles, congruent segments, congruent angles, and relative sizes of segments and angles. Just because two angles look like they are congruent doesn't mean they will be. Or just because an angle looks like a right angle doesn't mean it will be a right angle. Looking at this example, I'm given the diagram as shown, and I want to know what we can and cannot assume. Now, as you go through the first few homework assignments, I would have this list with you so you remember what you can and cannot assume. Now, as you get better at this, you will remember what you can and cannot assume from diagrams. So remember, things that I can assume are things like straight angles, collinearity of points, betweenness of points. So some things that I could assume from this diagram would be as follows. Line ACD and line BCE are straight lines. Angle BCE is a straight angle, as well as angle ACD. C, D, and E are non-collinear. C is between B and E, and E is to the right of A. Now things that I cannot assume are right angles, or congruent angles and segments, or relative sizes and positions. So things that I cannot assume from this diagram would be angle BAC is a right angle, segment CD is congruent to DE, angle B is congruent to angle E, angle CDE is an obtuse angle, and segment BC is longer than segment CE. Just because something looks the way it is doesn't mean it will always be that way. Now looking at some sample problems, we have problem one. For each diagram, tell whether X is between P and R. Answer yes or no. So my first problem A, I have points P, X, and R all on the same line. Therefore, 
These are collinear points. Problem B, I have points P, R, and X not on a line, therefore they are not collinear. And problem C, I have points R, P, and X again not on a line, so these are not collinear either. Problem 2, I want to draw a diagram in which points A, B, and C are collinear, points A, D, and E are collinear, and points B, C, and D are non-collinear. So notice the only points that share the same between A, B, and C and A, D, and E are point A. So I'm going to start with point A and then create a line that has B and C on it. So then A, B, and C are collinear points. Now, if I list D and E points, notice I have A, D, and E also collinear. Now looking at points B, C, and D, they are not collinear because they are not on the same line. Problem three, should we assume that S, T, and V are collinear in the diagram? Well, S, T, and V are on the same line, therefore, yes, we can assume that. B, should we assume that angle S is 90 degrees? Angle S is not stated that it's a right angle, and it does not have the right angle box that shows me that it is a right angle, so no, I cannot assume that angle S is 90 degrees. Problem four. If two sides of triangle ABC have lengths of seven and nine, what are the restrictions on the third side? So I know the triangle inequality states that I have to add the two sides together and my third side be less than that side. So if I have my side length of C, I know that C should be less than 16. Now C also has to be greater than those two sides subtracted together. So 9 minus 7 would be 2. So for triangle ABC to be a triangle, if it has lengths of 7 and 9, C, the third side, would have to be between 2 and 16. Question B has if two sides of triangle TIM have lengths of 10 and 20, what are the restrictions on the third side? So again, if I subtract those two sides and add those two sides, that's what the third side would have to be between. So 20 minus 10 is 10, and 20 plus 10 is 30. So in order for triangle TIM to be a triangle, C has to be between 10 and 30. In this lesson we learned, collinear points lie on the same line, and non-collinear points do not. Points are between each other if they lie on the same line. The triangle inequality states that two sides must always add to the more than the third side, and there are many things I can and cannot assume from diagrams. That's a wrap on this video. We'll see you in the next one.